tonight on the South Today. New Zealand's Great Walks open for business, but demand for the Milford Track crashes the booking website. An access road in rural Southland in dire need of repair, with residents concerned about safety for their community. And a report into a helicopter accident four years ago, with recommendations on tighter rules around night vision. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. As the hiking season approaches, bookings are opening for New Zealand's Great Walks, with massive demand already crashing the Department of Conservation's website. Bunks for huts at the Milford Track were released for the new season at 9.30 on Thursday morning. Department of Conservation was expecting around 7,000 users to be online when bookings went live, more than enough to fully book out the 2023-24 to 24 season. However, thousands of hopeful trampers were left frustrated with the website crashing as it struggled to keep up with high demand. The strong interest comes off the back of the record-breaking bookings that came in for the track last season, which saw bids fall within three minutes. But Doc insists its site isn't targeted by automatic booking bots and says many slots get re-released back into the system if customers don't complete their bookings. Some indecisive hikers may also change their mind later in the year, meaning those bunks are returned to the system. The Milford Track is the first to go on sale, with bookings for the other great walks to be progressively released over the next month. Across the South, the South Today. It's being described as a terrible day for Dunedin, as Otago University considers making several hundred academic and general staff redundant. The university is attempting to reduce its annual budget by around $60 million to ensure the institution remains sustainable. In a letter to students, Acting Vice-Chancellor Professor Helen Nicholson blamed a number of factors, including falling student numbers and the government funding not keeping up with rising costs. Applications for voluntary redundancies open next week, with more job cuts likely later in the year. Enrolments at Otago University are down by 0.9% overall compared to last year. Southlanders are remembering and mourning the loss of four teenagers who died in a tragic vehicle accident one year ago. The four teens, Connor Steele, Indika Roos, Kaya Kennedy and Umarahua Tau Otufare Tafai were killed when their ute slid into a concrete truck in wet conditions. The collision happened on Invercargill's Queen's Drive late afternoon on the 22nd of April last year. The boys were all from Southland and the ripples of the tragedy affected the entire region. Police this week confirmed the case investigation has concluded after almost a year, but details can't yet be made public as it's now with the coroner. Residents of a small seaside settlement near Invercargill are calling for their main access road to be sealed. An increase in traffic visiting the beach and parking areas has created potholes and other damage to the road, raising safety concerns. It's been a long and winding road for residents in Omoe Southland who just want safe passage to their homes. An increase in traffic to the scenic coastal village just south of the Macargill in recent years has caused damage to the area's gravel access road. That's created large potholes, dangerous bumpy surfaces and significant patches of loose gravel. Locals claim the route that was once a lifeline is now endangering lives each day. People will keep coming off the road. Yeah. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Um, it's quite bad. You know, and I've driven a lot of years over gravel roads and they don't normally concern me. Omoe residents say they've been warning local authorities for years about issues with the road. They don't believe the current system of grading the surface every few weeks is enough and say the council is severely underestimating the impact of the increasing traffic. I used to drive in and out and very, not very often see other cars on the road. Now you wouldn't really travel the road and not see another vehicle. Sometimes there'll be 50, 60, 70 cars parked in the parking areas and on the beach or more even. I don't believe that they think that the traffic is as big as or as great as it is. I think they believe that because there's only 40 odd residents down here there's not that many cars. Locals wrote a submission to Invercargill City Councillors in 2021 warning about the hazardous state of the four kilometre access route and calling for it to be properly sealed. The council has now included all Moi and Mokamoka roads in their long-term plan but residents want the work accelerated. I'm glad it's been addressed but I really think it needs to be Something needs to be done in the short term before somebody is 
is seriously hurt or one of those school buses gets it has an accident. But for now, the gravel road remains in place, with the community refreshing calls for council to act before there are more accidents. In Omaui, the South Today. An inquiry into a helicopter accident four years ago has recommended rules and standards are tightened around the operation of night vision goggles. The Transport Accident Investigation Commission released its final report today into an accident off Auckland Island almost four years ago involving a Southern Lakes helicopter. Paramedic John Lambeth was among three crewmen in the helicopter in 2019. The trio suddenly found themselves immersed in freezing seawater in a rapidly sinking aircraft after the helicopter plunged, narrowly missing steep cliffs. I can freely admit there was a Second, a few seconds of sheer panic there, uh, releasing myself, I, I floated up and, and hit into an object up above me, and certainly, uh, uh, to my own mind, I'm going to drown. The Commission's investigation found the pilot, using night vision goggles, very likely misinterpreted fog near the surface as cloud some height above. It's called on the Civil Aviation Authority to tighten the rules and standards around the operation of night vision goggles and better crew resource management. The three crew members were able to swim to safety and were picked up by a rescue helicopter the next day. The other guys swam beside me and um, we made it, to the, uh, made it to the shore. Southern Lakes Helicopters says it agrees with the findings and recommendations and will continue working with authorities to improve the safety of operations in the Southern Ocean. In Invercargill, the South Today. If I Yakane, still to come on the South Today, a successful return launch for a Wanaka-based NASA crew and a Taranaki man on a mission with his ferry sidekick ride the country for a cause close to his heart. There's 19% off recliner suites and lifted chairs, and a whopping 50% off all Oasis range beds. Plus, loads more great deals in stock. My mate John. Aero, used by Australia's top bowlers with their unique Z-Scoop grip that redefines the game. Machined with robotics for unparalleled accuracy, Aero, same line every time. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Drive away your way with three incredible offers on the Honda CRV Adventure Ready Range. Choose from 2.9% finance with zero deposit, third, third, third finance, or lease a new CRV from just $136 per week. These offers are only available for a limited time, so be in quick. From Honda. Welcome back. Wanaka residents may have spotted a familiar sign returning to their local skies as NASA resumes its super-pressure balloon launches. It's not a spy balloon, but part of a scientific program gathering data from across the world. Cheers as a massive white balloon is released into the sky. 
NASA has returned to central Otago, launching another of its super pressure balloons from Wanaka Airport over the weekend. It's one of two planned launches here by the United States Space Agency, with the second balloon currently going through rigorous testing. We like to test and then test and then test one more time just to make sure that everything is reading correctly and it's communicating properly. Once it's up in the air, there's only so much we can do to fix things. You can't go physically wiggle connections. And while the large balloon looks a bit saggy on the ground, it inflates to the size of Forsyth Bar Stadium once it reaches its planned altitude. The first launch carried a super pressure balloon imaging telescope from Princeton University which can map distant constellations. The second balloon is set to carry the Extreme Universe Space Observatory too, which collects data about tiny particles and neutrinos. Because we're trying to look at uh, cosmic ray particles from a different perspective. Uh, we're trying to look at them from above so that we could see more of the Earth at a time uh, and look for higher energy particles than is capable from the ground. Wanaka's weather conditions have often postponed launches in the past leaving the team deflated. But this time, the balloon was successfully launched on its first attempt. It's hoped it'll fly for up to 100 days, with the second super pressure balloon mission to be scheduled once testing is completed. In Wanaka, the South Today. Not every man and his dog have a motorbike with a special pet-friendly sidecar, but a Taranaki man has turned his adventure across the country into a suicide awareness tour accompanied by a furry sidekick. With the wind blowing through his fur, this dog is on the road for a good cause. Cairo the Border Collie and his owner Greg Anderson are on a suicide awareness tour around New Zealand on a motorbike. Anderson says he's struggled with mental health issues in the past. He's originally from a small town in Taranaki and wants to help others in small communities open up a conversation around mental health. The more a community is open about talking about suicide, the more likely someone at risk um, will be come forward and say to someone, well, I'm feeling this way and not be ashamed of it. Anderson's now part of the Writers Against Teen Suicide Group which aims to support people going through tough times. He says having Cairo the dog with him in the sidecar helps the people he encounters on his ride to relax and open up about their own experiences with mental health problems. It was more about getting the communities to open up about it and not hide it. Like it's something shameful, but because it's not. It's out there and we've got to make people more aware that we need to get out there. The pair, along with friend Marcus Pemberton, completed a North Island fundraising tour last year and are currently halfway through their six-week South Island tour, with the public able to make donations through their Give a Little page. In Gore, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Milford Track's popularity crashed Doc's booking website today as the Great Walks season opened for business. Residents of the Southland village of Umawi call on the council to repair their access road before a serious accident. And an inquiry into a helicopter accident near Auckland Islands four years ago recommended a new regulation around night vision goggles. And now we'll look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. We welcome the Associate Editor, Joe Simpson. Hello, Joe. Hi. What can we expect in the paper tomorrow? Um, so we've got more on the $16 million worth of cuts at Dunedin University. Mm. Okay, thank you. And the Beaumont Bridge became a complete bridge as the final concrete pour linked the two unfinished spans. And we've got reaction to the Stephen Jack situation, which is typically sympathetic, but no one's endorsing his comments. Right. Okay, we look forward to reading more tomorrow. Thank, thank you, Joe. You. Thank you. And time now for a look at the weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoreMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, a weak ridge of high pressure will keep rain away from the southern districts tomorrow, with westerly air flow developing on Saturday, ahead of cold southwesterlies from Sunday. Heading to the top of the South Island, Fresh northerlies and rain are heading for both Nelson and Greymouth tomorrow with highs of 16 degrees. And down in Christchurch it'll be much the same with a cooler high of 15. 
Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago. Well, the winds tend easterly as we come down through here. Ashburton gets 15 with some rain, while Timaru and Awamaru head for 16 with cloudy skies. Heading westwards to the central lakes. High cloud and light winds as Autumn Festival continues through here. Expect 17 degree highs in Wanaka, Alexandra and Queenstown tomorrow. Heading further south. Fine with light winds and the highs stay in the mid-teens. Both Gore and Balclutha get up to 16 and it's a 15 degree uh, Friday over on the coast in the Catlins. And down to the deep south. Mostly cloudy with light winds and down to 8 overnight. Tomorrow's looking fine with some spots of cloud and westerlies with a high of 16. And into the weekend, Saturday gets up to 17 with fresh winds and increasing cloud. And finally heading to Dunedin. Cloudy tonight with fresh northerlies and a 10 degree low. Friday, poppy day, will be mostly cloudy with pockets of sunshine and northeasterlies with a top temperature of 16 degrees. Saturday is looking very similar with more northeasterly winds and sunshine making it an 18 degree day. And that's the news this Thursday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. You can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. And you can also now follow us on Facebook. Just search for The South Today NZ to see our favourite stories from around the regions. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite o popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.